Janique, this is the first time we've ever really talked. Talk, it is. Right? Because mm -hmm. I know your mother well. Your father I know a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I knew your father before I knew your mother. Of course. And I saw you when you were really a small, when you were a small child. When okay. You were living at Yukuda Air Force Base. Mm. I came over to your house once. Okay. I probably don't remember. Of course you would. Yeah. I don't think you guys, I think you might have come down just to say hello because that was protocol. To be polite, right? Right. It makes sense. Wow. You know what year that was? Mm, let me think. It had to be in the 80s. Oh, well, then I wasn't born yet. <laughs> oh, I wasn't born until 89. Yeah. It had to have been in the 80s, I think. Okay, so maybe my uh, my brother and my sister were, were... I think so. Yeah. Well, you remember the big screen TV, the big plasma TV and the couch right in front of it? And there's uh, a huge TV, so you guys were were, were they living in in like towers or were no, they no no they were in the towers it was in the garden the garden oh then that had to be the 90s then because we didn't move there the until like 93 it was in the 90s so. okay it was over by the hospital on that side okay I think yeah we moved there in 92 yeah so mm -hmm. okay because I was talking with your father and he brought me over to see where you're staying because I said I wanted to see the place okay and he took me over there and that's the first time I think I met. Paula, but maybe I met her before then. I don't know, but I think okay. I met your mother then. Yeah, by, yeah. If, if we had the big plasma screen TV, that was definitely the, like the mid-90s. Yeah. So that might yeah, have been well, like 95. It was, because I, I was really so surprised. It was so huge, and the culture was right there. Yeah. It's not like... It was there, it was <laughs> yeah, huge. I remember that TV. It was huge. Yeah, it was. That was my dad loved his electronics, he so did, yeah. he always had the like latest and greatest of everything. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. Is he, how's he doing now? Is he he's doing, doing great. Yeah, he's, doing, he's doing really, really good. Yeah. I was just with your mother the other day, so I know how she's doing. She's okay. always doing well. Yeah. She's really good. We made a, um, a Zama run. Okay, gotcha. Went to Zama. Yeah. So tell me, Janique, where were you born? I was born in 1989. Okay. Now, where were you born? I was born in Texas. In Texas? I was. So you're not a Tennessee girl? I still am. I'm a Tennessee girl. Don't okay. get it twisted. No, I won't mean, get it twisted. <laughs> but, I mean... I, to be honest, I don't really remember Texas. Okay. Yeah, because I, um, uh, let me see, when I was two, going on three, we moved here. Okay. So, my parents have always been back and forth between here and, like, the States. So, so have you spend, spent most of your time? I sp you know, the, it's funny. I spent most of my time between here and Tennessee, okay. actually. Because, like, um, when I was little, um, every summer we would go to Tennessee to visit because, you know, my mom's family, you know, see my grandparents, cousins, aunts, uncles. Um, and then in 98, when my dad retired, uh, we briefly lived with my grandparents, uh, me, my, me and my two siblings. Now, this is so. your grandparents on your mother's on side? On my mother's side. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The famous mm -hmm. Gene Allison. So, he's very famous. Very, you know, and it's so funny because growing up I didn't realize. Right. Well, your mother didn't tell me until I did the podcast with her. And That's not really something that she kind of regularly tells people, I she think. She doesn't tell you. Your mother tells people about, she won't say anything about anyone. All these she's, famous she's groups. She's very she's humble. She's very, very humble. So. To a fault. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. No, it's to a fault. To a fault. She's agree. that humble and forgiving and kind. Mm -hmm. and she's an angel in flesh. Absolutely. You know what I mean? She 100%. really is. Mm -hmm. She's the type of person that, that you hear about that even if she was about to leave this planet, she'd want to know if you're okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. And she would literally bend over backwards to help other people before she helps herself. Right. For sure. And she's always doing it. I think mm -hmm. that's just her spirit, that she loves doing that. Yeah. So I think the worst thing you do is to tell her, don't do that. You're wrong. She, she couldn't survive if she weren't helping people. You're right. That's You're absolutely right. right. She likes it. So what do you mm -hmm. like? So, so growing up, you have siblings. I know uh -huh. your siblings. You have an older sister and an older brother. Mm -hmm. You're the baby. I'm the baby. Yeah. Right. I, I have another older sister, too. Oh, do you? Yeah. Wait, so you have two older sisters? I have two older sisters. Just I didn't grow up with the other one, though, but... Okay. But, yeah, I have... Mm -hmm. Are you close? Yeah, I'm close to all of them. Right. Yeah. Oh, see, that's right. I forgot. I know. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about your family. I was right. just thinking about from your mother. From my mother, yes. But you do have one other sister from your father. Yes, I do. So who are you close with? Who are you really close with? Um, yeah. I think I'm close with everybody, okay. I, I would say. Like, we, we try to keep in touch as much as possible. Well, do you? All four of you do? All four of us, yeah. Do you have like family chats or something? Or? Um, so me, my me and my sister and my mom. Um, so so um, me and my mom's other daughter mm -hmm. and my mom, we have a chat of our own. Okay. And then me and my other sister, uh, we usually like talk on like Facebook Messenger right. um, quite often. And whenever I go home, I try to go see her, or she'll drive up to Tennessee to come see me. Mm -hmm. Um, and then me and my brother, like, you know, he, we, we, we both do music. He's a producer. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Is so, he here in Japan? 
No, no, he's in Tennessee. Okay. So um, my mom's other daughter and then my brother, they're both in Tennessee. Right. And my other sister is in Texas. And you're the only one here in Japan. Yeah, I'm the only sibling in Japan. No, what, what, okay, well, we're going to go through your childhood. So okay. you spent time here in Japan and time in Tennessee. Yeah, so it's like equally split. Equally much. split. It's I, actually, I think, I think uh, now with me being in Japan for 10 years this go round, I think it might be slightly more now. In Japan. In it's starting Japan. to get that way. It's starting to get that way. But as yeah. far as my childhood goes, I did. It's like equally split between okay. here and Tennessee. Okay. Now, as a child, were you more academic or were you more active, more sports-minded? Neither. Neither? <laughs> I don't think so I was what either. Were you like as a little girl? Man, that's a good question. Like, if I if I look back, I just wanted to play outside and play with my well, Barbie dolls. Would so, you say? Would you wait, say wait, that? Wait, wait, wait. So were you like what they call a tomboy at the time? Not at all. Not, not at all. Not but at you all. like to like, play outside. I like to play outside, um, just you know, with my friends, play hide and seek or whatever. Right. But then, like, I still wanted to play with my Barbie dolls and stuff too. Okay. But I didn't play any sports growing up. No sports. No sports. All right. Did you read books a lot? Were you into that? Not really. Like, okay. I'm really trying to think back. I'm like, what did I do as a kid? Well, did I you think do I double just, dutch? Did you ever do double dutch? No. But I did like to jump rope. Um, I like to ride my bike, things like that. I think for me, actually, um, I really just loved, I loved music and I loved watching TV Okay. <laughs> as a so kid. So when you're small, what do, you, what do you think about most? Japan or do you think about Tennessee the most? Um, I guess it depends on which part of my childhood we're talking about because mm -hmm. like, um, what, I lived, what impressed you the most? I mean, in other words, okay. what do you think? What do you have your most memories? Mm, that's a good question. I would well, I guess because like I was so young when I came to Japan, I would probably say Tennessee because like that's when I was old enough to recollect. Okay. Like most of the memories, whereas like I think my earliest memories of being in Japan, I was about like five or six. Okay. So. I see. Yeah. So, so you really spent your, your adolescent stage in Tennessee? Yes. With your grandparents? Um, oh, no, you were with your parents. I, yeah, I was with my parents by then. Yeah. That's right. So growing up, when did you start singing? Or when did you know you had a musical family? Or did you um, always know that? I always knew I had a musical family. I think even bef before I was old enough to really like, understand like, life, <laughs> you know, okay. I think that I always knew like, you know, music is just our way of life. Right. Because my parents would always, um, you know, they would always have rehearsals in our house. Like, my dad had a music room in the house, and that's why I couldn't have my own room as a kid. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they, all, they would always be in that music room rehearsing with, like, you know, the different people who um, they did gigs with. Right. And me and my siblings would, like, be listening. Or not even, like, actively listening, but it's just, like, you couldn't help but hear yeah, it. But it was there. You know, yeah. Right. Yeah. So do you have, favorite, do you have a favorite genre of music that you like? I like every, I feel like I really like everything, um, but I, I guess if I have to choose, I guess I would say R&B, okay. but I really love everything though. Because right. I've heard you sing, because you did a tour with I. I did. Mm -hmm. You did, and you sang for your mother and put, had her crying up on stage, <laughs> we surprised her. We were crying on stage. <laughs> that was so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. And you really did that well. Thank you so much. I'll say, I don't know how much of that I can put up. But if I can, I'll put that up on this sure. podcast. Have a little bit of that up there. I don't. I don't see why you couldn't. I okay. Think, I think then I'll do that. Yeah, I'll put should be fine. Up there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you didn't have anything that you were really focused on when you were young. You were having a good time. I was having a good do time. You think mm -hmm. you enjoyed your childhood? You I think? really enjoyed my childhood. I had a great childhood. I think I definitely loved my time as a kid in Japan the most, um, just because like it was simpler. It was just a really really simple time. You know, when you're like in elementary school and all you got to do is like. You know, go play at recess. Like you know what I okay, mean. Like right. it was really simple. So um, was that on the then. east side? So on the east side? On the east side. East mm -hmm. side. Okay. Yeah, I went to Yokota East Elementary right. School. Okay. Mm -hmm. And where'd you go to high school? Uh, in, in in Nashville. In Nashville. Yeah. So you graduated then, but it was a, it was a little complicated, right, in the U.S. A little like bit. The it clicks was. Clicks and the people. Yeah, and stuff I in think school. like it was really complicated because like I I started um, living in Nashville officially when I was in middle school. Okay. And um, it was just such a culture shock, you know. I mean, even when I was living with my grandparents, too, when it went from the age of eight to nine, that was a culture shock, too. Mm -hmm. Just because, like, when you're living on the base, you're so sheltered. You, and you don't realize it until right, you right. leave, you know. Okay. And so... When did the first real shock... What were some of the things that really shocked you that you remember? I think it was, like, part of it was, like, um, income disparities. You know, like, as far as, like, 
being a kid and, and living on the base, it's like everybody seems to kind of have the same kind of um, like financial background. Right. Okay. And like you don't like no one's like like poor okay. <laughs> or, or anything or, or like that. Or extremely rich. Exactly. You don't exactly. have either. Exactly. So I think that like. Um, you know, lo- moving to the States, it made me realize how privileged I was. And I was like, oh, wow, like, I didn't know, you know, people were like, oh, you lived in Japan? Like, what What kind of, you know, what is that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And I got bullied a lot for it, actually. Did you really? I did. In what ways? How would people bully you? Um, Just kind of like, oh, you think you're better than me, kind of thing. Well, didn't you speak different than most of the kids, too? I, that, too. I was very proper. Articulate. Articulate. Yeah. You're articulate. <laughs> I was very so articulate. That, articulate. So that mm-hmm. people outside of the people in probably the school you went to could understand you. Yeah. Could you understand them? Actually, yes. I think okay. because I was used to it because, you know, I always visited Nashville, you know, during the summer. Right. So I was used to it. And then, you know, my mom still speaks that way. You know right. what I mean? So Exactly. Um, well, you no, know, she I could, does she? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait, Paul, I didn't... <laughs> I mean, not to say that she's not articulate. No, no she's very articulate. She's articulate, no, But, but she speaks sure. that way. With, no, she, your, your mother. <laughs> Paula, don't get me wrong or anything like this. But you're so warm and you're just so, <laughs> just so giving. She's such a beautiful person. She really is. And that's why I'm going to have a podcast with the two of you together. Mm-hmm. I have to have both of you together. But I see your father in you so easily. Everybody, all my life, that's all I've gotten is like. You're, you're, there's, there's no doubt. They have the saying. They say it's mama's baby. And Papa's maybe, mm-hmm. not in your case. Literally all my life, like I, it was to the point where I'm like, do I look like my mom at all? Like growing up, I was like, I guess I don't look like her at all. Like it kind of hurt. I was like, oh, I want to look oh, like, like my, my mom. mom. <laughs> <laughs> There's this meme actually of like, it's like John Cena in a wig. Right. Okay. And everybody's like, when someone tells me that I look like my father, that's a lit. I'm like, so you're telling me I look like a man? Like really? Like no, 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 no. no. I, I you pull it off well. You pull it off very well. <laughs> You've been on very well. No, but he I has see really strong you. genes. He, has, he does. His whole family has really extremely strong genes. It's ridiculous. Okay. Isn't that something? Yeah. On my mother's side, this this is the same case. I don't look like my father. Really? His first he was married twice. Okay. So his first kids all look like him, and I want to look like him so bad. Mm. My mother's genes are so strong. So all of us look alike. Gotcha. We know we're from the same father and mother because we all look alike. We look like our mother mostly. Mm-hmm. And we have some char- characteristics of our father, but we don't have his height. Okay. T- he doesn't have any height. I'm just okay. saying. We're taller than him mm-hmm. and everything. So it's really interesting. Mm, it is, yeah. Wow. It's interesting how genes work in general. This is something you just never know. Because like me, me and my brother, we look a lot alike. Mm-hmm. And then me and my, my, my dad's daughter, we look a lot alike. And actually people say we talk alike too. Is that right? It's really crazy, yeah. See, like, so I have to get to know your father better because your mm-hmm. father's. Was, I always picture your father as being quiet. AJ, I we he talked just a little bit, but yeah. you were always pretty quiet with me. Mm. So, I never spoke with him that much. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I guess my dad is like res- reserved more. I, I think, think so. Yeah. I think he's checking out the scene, the environment. Yeah. Is, is it okay? Is everything being the the guardian? Yeah. Yeah, making sure everything's all right. Then he'll mm-hmm. step in. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. So when did you decide to really get into music? Were you in, out of high school or during high school? Um, to be honest, I never thought I could get into music. Like, that, isn't that crazy? Like, I never thought I would. Um, but uh, after college, I decided to, to move here and, okay. and, and try my luck at it. Because I think I remember your mother saying you wanted to come and make it a try here. Mm-hmm. And she said, well, I hope she can make it. I don't know, because this yeah, is easy. Cause, so what I was going to do, okay. um, my, 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 I had this whole plan worked out. Like, as soon as I got to college, I was taking Japanese classes. Okay. Um, in co- while you were in while college? I was in college. I was taking Japanese classes. It was actually one of my minors. So I majored in broadcast journalism, minored in music, and minored in Japanese. Okay. But I didn't get to finish the Japanese minor. Right. But anyway, uh, I, got, I got really close, though. Um, so I was taking that. I, I took it for about three years of, of college. And then um, my goal was to join the JET program. Have you, have you heard of JET? Oh, everyone, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my goal. I was going to join the JET program, and that's how I was going to get here. Right. Um, and, you know, I'd be, t- I'd be teaching English, right? And you'd be able to finish up your Japanese, too. Exactly. Right. Yeah, that was my plan, but it just didn't work out that way. So how did it would happen? Um, so basically, uh, when I got to the, to the interview portion, um, you know, they asked me, like, where I would like to be placed. And um, I said that I wanted to be placed in Tokyo. And I was like, I want to be near my parents. And they were like, ah! 
<laughs> Absolutely just not. Yeah. And so had I been coached or something or had somebody said, no, nah, that's not going to... It's not gonna happen. You shouldn't, you know. Ask don't go for people. that. Maybe go to Osaka or something or like that, go or wherever to. they can place you, or just you know, be, just so be, you'd open, be open to anything, to anywhere. Right. Then I probably could have gotten it, because you had you an know. agenda, and they didn't I want someone with an agenda. agenda. They didn't want that. So is that how it's working? I don't know exactly the the fine details about what they do in the JET program when you go. So where'd you go to college first of all? Uh, Middle Tennessee State University. Okay, and you graduated with a degree in broadcast, broadcast journalism. journalism. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, they call it electronic media uh, okay. communications. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And you're good at it, but it's not actually your cup of tea. I don't even know if I say I'm good at it, honestly. <laughs> I mean, I think uh, the, the interesting thing is my senior year, I realized this is not for me. But, like, I was already... You already committed? Yeah. I had already taken all the classes, you okay. know? So it was just like, I might as well finish it, I guess. What about it that you did, didn't agree with you? Um, It's too formal. Like, I guess, like... What we were doing, we were doing more like you know news, like like news anchor type okay, stuff, okay. you know. And I, I sitting there and being like, you know, good evening, you know, thank you for tuning in to you know blah 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 news. My name is Janique Johnson, and you know, like sitting there like that was just too much for me. Like I wanted to, well, first of all, music is how my first love, right? right? Like I was really really passionate about music, so I think at that moment I regretted not majoring in music. Yeah, plus my school was actually no number two in the nation for um, recording industry. So why didn't I do that? <laughs> you could have easily. Yeah, I literally could have, but I was being practical. Okay. And the funny thing is my mom was like, why don't you major in music? And I was like, well, I think I should, you know, I really should be more realistic. I'm going to go with But where did that come from? Where the, where, where did, who, who put that in your head? I think different movies that I used to watch. But there was no relative or anyone no, basically no trying to say, you need to do this, yeah, you need to do that. They it was were giving like, you... There was like, you know, there's like a few movies where like maybe like someone is like a reporter or something like that, or like a news anchor. Or like I used to watch the news every morning before I would go to school, and I was really interested in like um, meteorologists. And I'd be like, wow, that looks fun to like tell the weather. Like that looks really, really fun, you know? And so at one point I even thought I might go to meteorology school after college. But then I was like, no, this is not <laughs> this is not for me. Like, what am I doing? Right. Yeah, it was interesting. I it, just, was, it was basically because of something you saw. Yeah, I think so. Your, I just felt like I felt like that was more attainable than being a singer. Ah, uh, the competition yeah. and everything, right? I think, yeah, I, I was I was genuinely scared. I was just I was like, I I'll never be able to be a singer. Like I just I don't know what it was, like confidence or, or what, but I just never okay. thought I would be doing this. Right. So you didn't come over here on the jet program as you tried. No. So then what'd you do? So um, I just asked my mom if I could just come and just like stay with her. <laughs> she said, I love you, baby, but, but <laughs> how? How are you planning on getting over here? Literally, she was like, what are you going to do? I was like, I don't know. Can I just come and just check it out first, you know, just to see if, you know, what's available to me? And she oh, was gosh. like, okay, you know, but get ready to work, you know? Right. So as soon as I got here, like. She was immediately just like, this is my daughter and she sings. Sing right now, you know, basically. And I'd be like, oh my God, like, just put on the spot, you know. Uh, and okay. so that's, that's kind of how I got here, like today. Just but, like, but didn't you go back? You came well, yeah, of course. Yeah, I kept, okay, I kept right. having to come back. Right. Yeah, so like I came I came. So, you came here. so tell me how it happened. Just, okay, so you came <laughs> here. She said she really put you in front. Of, she, she made it so that you didn't have a way out. Pretty much. You're going to yeah, find out. Yeah, she was out. like, if you're going to come here, you're, you're going to see exactly, you know, what, you know. It's like, going to take for you like. to be here. Exactly. Right. And she was like, and if you want to stay and if you don't want to have to go back, you know, to the States, because it was pretty bleak <laughs> at the time after, you know, what graduating high school. What years are we talking about? This was 2012. 2012, So okay. I, had, I had graduated um, high school, I mean, not high school, college, December of 2011. And um, I just, I like got like a regular job, you know. Okay, it was whatever, rough. Right. It was really rough. And I actually And got, this is in Tennessee. This is in Tennessee. I got fired from the job. <laughs> it, yeah, it was rough. Got fired and wait, I because think, wait, because you had an attitude or what was it? Okay, so Oh, you want to talk about it? I was working that? at a, Yeah, we'll talk about okay, it. We can talk right, about it. Okay. So I was working at a call center um and someone who called in got an attitude with me. Yeah. And so I was and I was still pretty new. I think I had I was like just out of training, maybe like a month out of training. And so I didn't really know how to handle it. So I asked my supervisor to like help me. I'm like, this person doesn't want to talk to me. Can I transfer them to someone else? And they were like, no, you have to de-escalate this person. And I was like, okay, you know, and obviously it just, it was 
awful. <laughs> like the person ended up being racist and they were kind of like, you're, you're black, aren't you? Like, I can hear it in your voice. You're black and black people are ignorant and I don't want to, like, it was just really, really bad. And so, um, I kind of like had an outburst at that moment. You, you I didn't really, say really, anything. It to really the triggered person. you. It really triggered me, and so I like took my headset off and like just like threw oh, it. Oh, you didn't say anything to the person. Did I you? didn't say anything to the person. I just was really upset and like just kind of had an outburst like at my desk, kind of just like I like took my headset off, threw it, and just kind of like yelled. Well, not yell, but just kind of like. <laughs> Had this ever happened to you before? No, it never happened to me. Not it, not in that not in that way. Right. And so my supervisor was like, "That's it. You're done. Give me your badge." And, and I was you, just okay. like. Uh -oh. Wow. Okay. And the weird thing is, I didn't, I wasn't like, oh no, I lost my job. What am I going to do? I was just like, bye. You always knew you had a parachute. <laughs> you, come on. Grandparents, your parents. You said, hey, but I have a way I don't know. Out. Like, I, for, for whatever reason, even with Who all of that. Who were you staying with then? Who were you I was, I was staying with my sister. Okay. I was sleeping on her couch. Okay. Yeah. So, I don't, for, for whatever reason, even at that time, I just, I, it still did not click to me like, hey, you can be a singer. Like, you really can. I knew I wanted to. And I always said, like, because that's why I had that plan of, like, I'm going to do the JET program. And then, you know, I'll do my contract with the JET program. And then when it's finished, you know, maybe I'll, you know, try to get into singing that way. I knew I wanted to, but I didn't know that I actually could, okay. if that makes sense. Okay. So it was kind of like, in a way, I manifested it, but I just wasn't confident in that manifestation. Right. So once that happened, uh, then, like, my car broke down. So I didn't have a car. Um, I was supposed to move in actually with my cousin. Uh, we were gonna get an apartment together. She was like, "You don't got no job, girl." Mm -mm. <laughs> <She> <laughs> and rightfully so, right? Real. Like, real. I'm not even mad at her Keep for that. Real. Like, she had to do what she had to do. You know, I was so irresponsible back then. I had nothing. Like, you know, so she you probably would have. I was 19? like 20, 22, 22, at the, okay. 20, 22, 23. Okay. Um, and so at the time, like she would have been, you know, probably paying everything. everything. And she was like, nah, you're not going to do that to me. So, yeah, so had no place to stay. Um, so I basically felt like I had nothing to lose. So that's when I called my mom and I was just like, can I just come and just try my luck? And she was like, okay, sure. And so uh, October of that year, I came and I tried some things out and it actually, it stuck. Like it okay, worked so out when, really when, well. Tell me, tell me that point. I want to okay. know the point to where you felt like, I can do this. Um, I think it what was like happen? just, I'm trying to think. Like, so I stayed the first time that I came. I was here from October to like December, um, like right before New Year's. And I think by December, I was actually kind of getting, getting a few opportunities, you know. Such as? Such as like... Um, I, I got this one job with my dad where I was um, we were doing some kind of like wedding gig together. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. Pretty good money. <laughs> so, Did your mother ever coach you in singing and teach um, you, give you some When I was little, a little she bit. Was, oh, so she was always, it was yeah, always Yeah, she was there. always kind of just like, you know, what can, you know, like, so actually the first time that she realized I could sing, I was about 10 years old. Okay. Um, and that's maybe a year after I realized I could sing, but I was really shy about it. Right. Um, and she I, never pushed you or put any pressure on you? She never pushed me or put any pressure on me. She had this student who she was coaching, and the, the student would come to the house all the time. And I kind of was a little bit jealous, a little bit. Like, I was like, I want to I wanna sing too, but my mom didn't know. Like, she didn't know that I, you know, wanted this to sing. This when you were young. Okay, I was ten. really, I was like 10. I was okay. really young. So she didn't know that I wanted to sing. So she's just coaching this other, you know, other girl. And once the girl leaves, I go up to her and I'm like, I can sing too. And she goes, really? And I'm like, yeah, um, I can sing Reflections by Christina Aguilera. And she goes, okay. And I sing it for her. And she's like, wow, like, you know, you sound amazing. So she books me this commercial with Sony. And that was my first ever job. At 10 years old. 10 years old. <gasps> <laughs> that is so nice. Mm -hmm. But then I never really did anything after that. Up were you, were until, you really nervous then? Were I was doing? really shy. I was a very shy kid. Right. So, um, and I think that that kind of added on to like the whole confidence thing of like, I don't know if I'll ever really sing. I want to, but I don't know. Right, right. Yeah. Self-doubt. Just A self lot of self-doubt. A lot of self-doubt. Mm. Yeah. So, um, fast forward back to coming here. Um, all right, but then so, you come back here and then you're mm -hmm. starting to do it with your father. Yeah. You well, with with both of them, because, you know, they both were like, we're going to look out for you, obviously. But you said the first job wasn't with your father? You came back so and you did that, the wedding? Technically, that wasn't the first job. That okay. was just the first, like, 
Big job. money job. Yeah, where I really felt like <laughs> I can do this. But my mom was always taking me on her, like, on her gigs with her. I bet she was. Um, like, she, I'm trying to think, like, she would have, like, uh, gigs at, like, hotels or something like that, where, like, right. you know, she'd play with the band or something, and she'd, like, take me on gigs like that, and I would just kind of, she might, like, give me a little portion of her money or something, right. and I would just, like, maybe sing a song or two, you know, just to kind of show, like, the band leader, like, she can do this, you know, if you want to hire her, you know. That's so sweet. Wow. Yeah, and actually, one of those gigs um, that she had was with a man named Philip Wu. <laughs> He's been on my podcast. Okay. Yeah, he, yeah. This guy is phenomenal. He's amazing. Also, very low key. Very You'd low never key. Never know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he was raised around black guys. Yeah. Here he is, Chinese, raised around black guys. No, mm-hmm. his whole back. You have to see his podcast. Okay, y'all great. have to I have to Fantastic. watch it. But he actually, so so that now that was the gig actually that I feel like probably really catapulted me because like it was kind of a like a whole domino effect from there. So basically, she took me on this gig. It was at like the Mandarin Hotel or something like that. And she had me sing Lady Marmalade. And um, he really he really liked it. Like he really liked, you know, my performance. And so from there he started like asking me to do his gigs. But that came like maybe like a like the next year, I think. You have to do here, right? Yeah. We well, gotta so, earn it somehow, you have to get there. Yeah. And so once he started putting me on his gigs, then like other people started seeing me too. And then a man named Ralph Roll who was the drummer for Kubota Toshinobu at the time. Okay. He saw me. Kubota? No, 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 not Kubota, but I mean the drummer. Ralph okay, the drummer, okay, but he's the drummer for him. Yes, so Ralph Roll. La 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 la. La la love song, yeah, that's him. So when he saw me, he was like, how would you like to audition for a tour for Kubota Toshinobu? And I didn't know who he was at the time. Right. So I was kind of like, I guess, sure, why not? <laughs> And so um, I auditioned and I got it. Like it was. And you toured with. I toured. With, that was my fir- the first artist that I ever toured. And you with. did that. Go shabuti no go go mate. Sure did. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I I started touring with him in 2015. So I got here 2012. By 2015, I had my first tour, and yeah. You're still going for it. Mm-hmm. Tell me what. During your time so far, since you've been here, let's stick with the time that you're here now, you're okay. seeing everything else. What's been the most challenging time that you've dealt with, and how did you handle it? As far as like singing or whatever, just in, whatever in general? Whatever was challenging. Was it something made you take your headphones off and go like this? <laughs> <laughs> What's been the challenging time, question. and how did you handle it? Um, to be honest, I think COVID was probably the most, the most difficult. Like, I mean, I, I, I had difficult times, of course, just like, you know, trying to just get out there and um, stand on my own two feet. That was that was difficult in itself, but I I feel like nothing compared to COVID. Okay, so what was that like for you? Um, I mean, you know, entertainment was like the first thing to go. Because that's a group gathering. Right? Yeah, and it's kind of like, well, we don't really need that. It's not essential, right? So that was the first thing to go, and um, I just I just wasn't working for like a whole year. It was rough. So you just had only one year where it was just dead. Yeah. It wasn't three years. Mm-mm. It was a year. It was just a year, okay. thankfully. Um, because I think like, after about that year, I think people were realizing, like, okay, actually, we kind of need art. We do kind of need entertainment. So, so let's then go what did you it. do? How did it open up for you? Um, how, I mean, how did you handle it after that year? So I, I applied for a lot of subsidies, which that, and that's where the difficulty really came in because my, my Japanese isn't the best. I speak enough. I can kind of survive, you know, in Japan. Um, I can read katakana, hiragana, like, you know, some kanji, that kind of thing. But when it comes to filling out forms, going to the ward office, tax office, it's a whole other ballgame, yeah. And so I just really struggled with, like, trying to communicate and um, just... Yeah, trying to like receive that that aid. <laughs> so how'd you get how'd you get over it? How did how did you get help to make it happen? Um, uh, like family friends, like okay. you know, like Japanese family friends uh, okay. who speak Japanese. Right, and that did help you out. That helped me out so much. Wow. Yeah, thank thank God for them <laughs> because yeah. without without yeah. them, I don't know what would have happened. So tell me, where do you see? So you like what you're doing now? You're enjoying it. Where do you see yourself going with this? Um. How do you see yourself in another five years? I mean, what's your ultimate goal? My ultimate goal actually is to like do this, but in the States. Yeah. Okay, talk to me. Uh, I mean, I would love to continue doing it here too. Like if I could go back and forth, that'd be great. But like, 
I really, really want to do it in the States just because like those stateside artists are like who I grew up with listening to, admiring, you know. Um, and it's not to say that I don't admire the artists that I work with now, but I think it's surreal when it's like somebody that you've like known like your whole life, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, like Beyonce or something like that. Like, mm. I think that would be amazing to like. So you want to work with, work with her? Um, not even her just specifically. That was just an example. But right. but yeah, I would love to like sing backing vocals or... Oh, so you want to be a background. You no, are no, a background artist. I'm, right? Yes, I'm a backing vocalist. Okay. Um, but I would love to like also do backing vocals in the States. But then also I would love to um, yeah be my own artist as well. Okay. Um, I, I also do songwriting. I've like written songs for video games and stuff. So I would love to um, be able to do that. Um, in the States or or even just write for other artists because I've never really been able to write for like an artist like an R&B singer or a pop singer you know like it's always just been like video games for the most part which I love that too um, but yeah I would love to write for like so kind of mainstream yeah. yeah I think that would be really cool that's beautiful that's beautiful so what is what are some of the the funniest things that have happened to you since you've been here Funniest things. That's a good question. Um, it's a fun. I think I don't know. It could be funny, but also annoying, or just like going somewhere and like speaking perfect Japanese, and then being like, "Sorry, I don't speak English." Uh, yeah, like, "Sorry, I don't speak English." You'll tell them that. No, they'll tell me. They'll that. tell you that. Yeah. After you. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. You'll speak to them in Japanese. Yes. Yeah. They understand it totally, but then they think because you're a foreigner, yeah. you're speaking to them in English. Yeah. And they yeah. respond to you as if they didn't hear a single word exactly. of Japanese, you just got through speaking to them. Yeah. You will walk around like, like what? <laughs> I'm speaking. I'm, I'm speaking to you in Japanese. Japanese. Yeah, what are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so a... just stuff like that. So how, do you, so how do you respond to it? What do you do? Um, you, usually there's like, some saint, like a Japanese, like some other Japanese person that's there that's just like, what are you talking about? She like spoke to you <laughs> in Japanese. Like, you know, that, that happens a lot. Okay. Um, so it still happens. That's something yeah, still happens still, to you? I've been here for 10 years and it right. still happens. Do you yeah. see yourself, how long do you see yourself being here? I don't know. Like, at first I was saying I wanted to leave within the next year or so, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. Like, if, if I have the opportunity to, like, go come back and forth, I would do that as long as I can. When Do you have any particular place in the States you'd like to go to? Probably, like, Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. But I also, um, it's been a long time since I've really, like, lived around my family. So I would love to live in Nashville, like, for however long I can and then okay. maybe go to Atlanta or, or go back and forth in that sense. Like, I kind of don't want to be necessarily rooted in one place. I want to just be able to travel and like do everything that I can. Because right. like I not only want to dabble in music, I want to do like acting and stuff too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. what type of acting? Any type of acting. <laughs> Voice acting or like drama or comedy. I like secretly want to be a comedian. Like, <laughs> Do you, really, you yes. want to do that as well? I'm really goofy, so I would love to like be in a comedy or something. That's interesting. I would love that. Mm-hmm. So you can see so did, did you see this most recent one? It's called the 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 best man's the best man final chapter final chapter yeah I did. <laughs> Every single one of you are fantastic actors. Yeah. The director, the the writers. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a flaw in that series Absolutely. that I could find at all. I and I'm that. watching you over and over and over again. That's how good it is. Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. I really enjoyed it. And of course, like, you know, well, I was I was pretty young when the first Best Man came right, out. Right, right. Um, but I like went back and watched the the original the Best person. Man, and then I watched um, Best Man Holiday again That's too. That's right, that second one. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, this is this whole series is just That's amazing. Good. Like the whole, just yeah, it's amazing. That was good. They all did such a good job, and they have such a good synergy with each other. Mm -hmm. You can see it. You can feel it. Yeah. It's a good feel. Yeah, like you can tell they're like friends in real they life. Are. Yeah. There's a good feel there. Yeah, but I but I love I love TV. Like I love I love watching movies and you know TV sh series and stuff like that. So yeah. um, I think for me, I'm just like I want to I want to do that. Like yeah. Why not? Why not? Let me ask this, Janique. 
If you could go back in time and you could see the younger Janique with all the information and knowledge you have now, what age would you go back to and what advice would you give yourself? I would probably go back to, I guess, when I came, like, like 23, like when I first kind of stepped off the plane. And I would just let myself know, like, it's going to be okay. Because I was, like, a mess. I was such a... <laughs> when I, first, I don't know what was going to happen. I was just, like, you know, because I was living with my mom, like, in her, like, really tiny apartment at the time. And I was just, like, am I ever going to, like, be, like, able to move out and, like, get my own place or, you know, get to a point where I'm getting regular work and... You know, so I would just, yeah, like, it's gonna be fun. Like, just, just stay consistent, you know, chill out, <laughs> just relax. You're gonna be fine. Oh, that's so beautiful. Janika, I wanna thank you for being here. It was fantastic. Thank Wonderful. you, thank you for having me. Yes. I wanna thank all of you for watching this. Remember that this is actually a podcast. I have to remind myself of that. So it's on all of the podcast platforms. However, since you're watching this, make sure you press like and subscribe. And remember, it's all alone, so continue to reach for the stars because you're too blessed to be stressed.